Hi there, my name is Lars Sorensen. We're here over at the Computing Conference 2019 in London. And we're talking to our delegates, uh, to paper writers, and in this case, uh, a professor from the University of Calabria in Italy. Uh, we're very glad to uh, have with us uh, the Honorable Professor Libero Nigro. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And uh, we're going to talk about your paper, um, Modeling and Analysis of Partially uh, Stochastic Time, Petrinets Using Opal Model Checkers. It's a long title, but I'm sure it's a long that title. <laughs> the experts watching this video know it's going to be interesting. Could you tell us a little bit more on, on why you started this, uh, this research and, uh, and, and, and what came out of the paper? In uh, my presentation, I, I tried uh, to explain uh, why we use uh, this kind of modeling language. First of all, uh, it is important to stress that uh, it is a formal, rigorous modeling language. In fact, in fact using this kind of uh, uh, modeling language, one can tend to produce a short, compact model, which in many cases are also scalable. And uh, the interest in using this uh, modeling language is because, uh, as today, there is a growing uh, importance uh, in considering the design, the development of, uh, for example, cyber physical systems, <coughs> with this approach, with this modeling language, we can uh, uh, formalize the specification of a system and make uh, a thorough analysis of the system that is uh, proving the property of the system. From the engineering point of view, this is uh, very important because the engineer must first speci specify the system, check the property, and then move to design, prototyping, implementation, etc. And uh, in my presentation, I, I, I have uh, uh, pointed out that uh, this kind of language combines timing issues with stochastic issues. And such a combination makes, uh, in general, a system difficult to study because uh, the system, the system tend to be, tends to be undecidable. And so we have explained in which way we can exploit uh, the model checker of UPAL for making both a qualitative analysis and then a quantitative analysis. The qualitative analysis uh, uh, aims to prove that uh, something can happen in the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, qualitative analysis is based on the exhaustive model checker of UPAL, which builds uh, a diagram the, which is named the model state graph, uh, which contains uh, all the possible execution status of the system. And then, uh, by navigating uh, on this graph, uh, it is possible to definitely check if some property old or not. But knowing uh, that something can occur, a property holds, it is not sufficient in general because we must accompany this kind of analysis with also a quantitative investigation. And for these purposes, we use the statistical model checker of UPA in which the system, try, the, the toolbox tries to predict a given number of simulation runs, and through the simulation runs, it uh, uh, extrapolates a, a, some property by proportion, for example. How many times occur that the event is fine that holds, with respect to the case it does not hold, it so it uh, proposes uh, a confidence interval uh, of the probability of occurrence of the, of the event. So we use the two tools in a synergic way. And what is uh, uh, interesting to know about our approach is that uh, the same model can be used for exhaustive model checking and for statistical model checking. Using the same model 
guarantees that only the viewpoint of the analysis changes. Change. Yeah, that's because it. Uh, when one changes the model, they, there is uh, the, the possibility to introduce uh, some uh, variation, uh, also not decided, which can make obviously the conclusion not uh, not interesting, uh, useless. So I can imagine people were enthusiastic about your story. Did you get some good feedback? Yes, uh, we achieved uh, some good uh, uh, feedback. Uh, also, beside the presentation, when we moved uh, outside the uh, presentation room, uh, in which also other people who are working on similar approaches uh, was uh, was uh, happy to discuss with me uh, about the difference uh, about our approach with other approaches that they used, so it was uh, positively to compare the experience. I'm very glad to, to hear that. And other, besides your presentation and the questions, how was your experience with us at the computing conference? This is for me the first time to attend this kind of conference, so I was uh, um, I was uh, uh, in the position to discover what, uh, what uh, this conference uh, could offer to the attendants. And uh, until now, uh, I was uh, positively <laughs> impressed uh, because uh, for the exchange of ideas, not only for the questions which uh, can be are posed at the end of the presentation, but also outside. Uh, the yes, presentation in informal time. Informal, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. When people can meet and then exchange ideas, it was positive. I'm glad. Impression. I'm glad to hear that, Professor Negro. And I want to thank you so much for complying with us in just a short time to yes. uh, tell us something about your work with this <coughs> way more elaborate. So we would like to invite you to go and check it out. Find the paper on our website, and while you're there, check out the dates and locations for our other conferences. We would love to see you there, uh, or even to uh, invite you to submit your paper. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Please uh, think about sharing it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.